there are people who came to Jesus and said, um, Lord, they use the word Lord, which is a discipleship term, I will follow you wherever you go, and that's a discipleship term too. The word follow means to imitate. And um, Jesus said, foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another, uh, he, he saw somebody else and he said, follow me. That word follow me, again, is a discipleship word. And um, they said, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And then another came to Jesus and said, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me go and bid them farewell at my house. And Jesus said, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. These three people, it's interesting. It's, it's kind of like uh, one person comes to him and says, I will follow you. And Jesus puts them off. He's saying, uh, um, we're camping. This is not easy. And in a sense, he turned him away from discipleship. You'd never do that for uh, someone who wants to become a believer. <clears throat> but not everybody is really cut out for the rigors of discipleship. And then Jesus actually invited someone into discipleship and he put up an excuse. And Jesus corrected him on that in terms of level of priority. And then someone else came to him and said, I want to follow you wherever you go, but here's my conditions. And Jesus turned it around and said, no, here's my conditions. And so we see in these three examples that there is a cost in terms of priority on discipleship. That's in Luke chapter 9, verses 57 to 62. In Luke chapter 14, Jesus continues in this whole vein of the cost of discipleship. And he says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. So again, he's not talking about becoming a believer. He's talking about discipleship. And in terms of priority, the word hate here means to love less. Less in terms of priority. And, and so often we put other things before Jesus, and it, it, it won't work in terms of discipleship. When I became a disciple, uh, and, I, and I should say something, it was a very awkward dance for me. I mean, no one was teaching discipleship like this, this concept. We were using that word interchangeably with being a believer, but I could see a discrepancy. I could see somehow there, there was conditions on being a disciple that weren't on being a believer. And I said, Lord, am I, can I be a disciple? I mean, is this another level to go to? And, and am I, could I be a disciple like those 2,000 years ago? The same kind of thing? And the Lord began to show me that he was calling people into discipleship today, just like he did 2,000 years ago. His program hasn't changed. The, the, the costs haven't changed. The conditions haven't changed. The only thing is now is we're walking in an invisible school. We're walking in a, in a, I mean, you're not seeing the physical person of Jesus. You're not camping physically with Jesus. But as you go through life, you draw from him, you learn from him, you ask him questions. And I, and I, I, I would secretly kind of in my heart say, I'm, I'm really a disciple of Jesus. I've really crossed over into something. And so he put conditions on it. Uh, my family, when I became a believer, they weren't upset with that. Um, you know, it was no big deal to them. When I became a disciple, man, that changed the whole game. I couldn't do the things I used to do. I couldn't act the way I used to act. I couldn't sit around listening to their jokes. I couldn't do the kinds of things that I used to do. And it kind of separated us. It created a tension that wasn't there before because of, I wanted to be like Jesus. I wanted to act like him. I wanted to, I couldn't picture him sitting around uh, listening to dirty stories. And so it put a cost on discipleship. Um, 
So Jesus teaches here in John, um, Luke 14 that we're to count the cost. And he says, uh, for whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And he uses that phrase repeatedly, cannot be my disciple. For which, in, which of you intending to build a tower does not sit sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. So discipleship is hard. It's intentionally hard. It, he, he didn't make it easy. It requires discipline. It requires effort. And uh, it's not for wimps. It's not for whiners. It's not for everybody. You need to count the cost. And then he says... Um, there's a king who uh, was going to go to war, and so he had to sit down and actually count the cost of whether or not he could go to war with so many people and, and, um, or to make peace. And he says, uh, likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all cannot be my disciple. Give me, I'll give you an example of... of um, Hating, hating your mother and father. He says wife and children, even your own life. But uh, let me give you an example of this. Jesus meets two of John's disciples, James and John, brothers. And then, then they camp together. They're listening to John preaching and, and watching John's ministry. Then sometime later, Jesus walked by where they were working and they're in business with with Andrew and, and Peter, and uh, they had a fishing business. And Jesus walked by and said, follow me. So he was inviting them into discipleship. It wasn't like he was a complete stranger and they'd never seen him before. And he's just walking down the beach and he says, follow me, and they follow him. It, it reads that way, but they'd actually met before. And they went to Jesus' tent when he was camping out uh, where John was baptizing. And so they had met before. They had this introduction. And so as he walks by, he invites them into the discipleship and he says, follow me. And so they left their nets and began to follow him. Well, in, in, with the eyes of my heart and my imagination, as I meditated on that whole story, I could picture something like this happening. The Bible doesn't say this, but I could see something like this happening. The two boys began to follow Jesus walking down the shore of the lake. Zebedee, they're the sons of Zebedee. So Zebedee's standing there, the nets are on the ground, the, the, the boats are beached, and Zebedee says, hey, hey, where are you going? And they said, we don't know. Who's the guy? We don't know. Where are you, where are you, when are you coming back? We don't know. Hey. What are you going to be doing? We don't know. I think something like that happened. You know, Zebedee is like any good Mennonite dad or Amish dad. You know, he t brought his kids up with a, a good, strong work ethic. And here they are. They're just walking off, leaving the business. And it's not just his business. This is his social security. Those boys are his social security. They're his sons. And so, in terms of priority, Jesus had to take priority over Zebedee. That had to be hard. I don't think Zebedee appreciated it. And then I can picture a conversation like this. You know, they're camping. Uh, they're camping for, th for three and a half years. Peter has a wife, possibly children. We know Peter had a wife because Jesus healed his mother-in-law. Why would you have a mother-in-law if he didn't have a wife? And that'd be a bummer, right? And so we know he had a wife. Peter is camping with Jesus. And, and, and I can picture, you know, this conversation. She says, Pete, when are you coming home? He said, I don't know. What, what are you doing with your time? There's, there's, there's business here. And there's, how come you don't come home? And he just said, I don't know. I, I'm following Jesus. And he had a wife. Zebedee, I picture a conversation like this, you know. The boys came home for a visit. And Zebedee sits down with them and there's this long, cold silence. It's an awkward, awkward visit. 
And, and he says, uh, boys, what do you do? Well, we, we do whatever Jesus tells us to do and we manage crowds and he says, do you work? Well, not, not like you, Dad, not like we used to. You don't work? How do you get money? And they just look at each other and they don't want to explain. They said, well, some women follow us and they supply our need out of their purses. Is that how I raised you? Is that how I trained you? To live off, the, live off of welfare? Handouts? When you coming, when you coming back home? When you coming back to business? Dad, we don't know. Where's this thing headed? <laughs> we don't know. He's, I hear things about Jesus. The, the rabbis think he's demon-possessed. He's, he's in this for money and, and for women, and, and, and he loves wine. And you're following him? And it just made him look bad. They said, Dad, it's, it's just not that way. And re, I, I can't imagine Zebedee really getting it. When I became a follower and really, really started imitating Jesus, my family, they didn't get it either. I, it created a real tension back home. And, and for a long time, they just, we couldn't even talk. They couldn't speak to me. My, my in-laws, they, they really didn't get it. It looked, like, it looked like I was wrecking their daughter, their daughter's life. They had given her to me and then I met Jesus and I became a disciple right away. And, it just looks totally irresponsible. I remember just long, long periods of silence where they, I, I knew that they, they didn't like me and they didn't like what I was doing. And I had to decide, well, I could, I could compromise or I could, I could try to go their way, do the things I know would please them, but it was just such an awkward dance being a disciple. And I had to count the cost. I had to say, I, I, I'm in, I'm in, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow where this thing goes. And, and in time, it all changed. And in time, their respect for me came back. And in time, we were able to talk. And these days now, we're able to talk about that period of, of, of my life. And um, it seemed like as I did follow Jesus, it all did start evening out. It wouldn't have happened if I compromised and I switched the priority, but by keeping him as number one, he, he showed me how to bridge back, he showed me how to, how, to, how to win them, and it just took time, but it was a very awkward thing to do. There's a cost to discipleship, and Jesus will not reduce that cost for you or for anybody else. He wants to be priority number one in our lives. Amen.